where have I been all my life? Okay, let's call this meeting to order and stand for the pledge. <coughs> States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call. Honorable Mayor Ron Shaver. Here. Council Member David Fowler. Here. Doug Shasso. Here. Allison Howe. Here. Clint Anderson. Here. Lisa Northrup. Here. Kevin Lindell. Present. Okay. First meeting of the new year. First item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from the December 17th council meeting. Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Your Honor. A draft copy of the December 17th, 2019 regular meeting minutes are provided in your packets and presented for your approval by resolution. Has everybody had a chance to review them? Are there any changes or comments? Yep. They look good. Seeing none, I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I re offer a resolution to approve the meeting, the meeting minutes from our last regular city council meeting. Second. I have a resolution by Allison Howe and second by Kevin Lindell. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. <clears throat> Next is the swearing in of a new officer, Jared Larson.
on my short period of time out on the road with my SBO, everyone has been really, truly, truly you know, appreciative and very, very respectful to me, and I really respect that. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Again, congratulations. And thank you. Okay, the next one is recognition of Mr. Hoser as employee of the quarter for the third quarter of 2019. Mr. Wells, Glammeyer, and Kirkendall. Well, I know that uh, <clears throat> Mike uh, was reluctant to be here today uh, just because he doesn't like to be um, recognized, but he's received a lot of recognition over the last couple weeks since we've announced his thing. Mike's been with the city for many years, uh, worked at the uh, fire department, did a wonderful job over there, and we added him to the building department a few years ago and has done an excellent job over there. We're very happy to have him on board, and I'll, I'll let Steve kind of take off and talk a little bit about him, and, and then, you know, Mike, you don't have to talk tonight. That's kind of the benefit, <laughs> but, but we're very glad that you made it, and we wa I want you to leave appreciate very much all the work that you do Thank you. don't let him off that easy <laughs> no i i told mike that the agenda was fairly short tonight so we asked that he keep his comments to exactly 30 minutes no no less no more Three minutes. <laughs> which he is obliged to do so no we're we're excited to honor mike tonight uh you know i looked back and mike started with the city and the fire department in 1998 that's a long time ago and uh, he was here when I came in the building department and uh, he was really instrumental in getting me up to speed with, with what was going on in Fort Morgan and it's taken a lot of time to, to spend with me. And he's a great employee. The contractors love him. They ask for him when, when they come in uh, because they know that they're gonna get a straightforward answer and that he's there to help and, and not to hinder projects. So we're pretty excited. We've been beating him up a little over this. We've got a lot of fun things on his door at work and. And we're excited to have him be our employee of the quarter. I know Mike uh, Kirkendall's got them some things he'd like to say, but I'm just glad to have Mike in my department, so. Anyway, he, uh, when Mike got hired to come over to help me, and I was never realized how grateful I was to get somebody to help me. And, uh, <laughs> but he also has done a lot of work on the public work side, so people may not know that he's been involved with the public re, uh, sidewalk replacement program. He does a lot of inspections at the ADA requirements. His first baptism working for the city was with uh, Steve's predecessor over at the Baker School, uh, uh, new, excuse me, the new middle school when they were doing all of the concrete work on the public right of way. And then when uh, Steve's predecessor left, he got all the paperwork he had to complete. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Basically, he wasn't bored when he got over to my office, let's just put it that way, and he's, he's come through and he showed that, uh, and on top of that, he's been studying hard to get his certification, so not only does he work, he spends time trying to take tests so that he can get his certifications too, so I really appreciate everything he does and is doing. I do got two great bosses. <laughs> Step up to the mic and say that so everybody can get a picture. You know, um, before before Mike sits down, I think one other attribute that that we have to share with with the public is his adherence to the city goals of positive communication, um, respect to others, customer service, and, and lead by example. Um, I've seen him go out of his way in his job, outside of his job. Uh, to help people at the city, help people within the community that may need something because of a situation that's going on in their life, or he's just, he's there to help. And I think it's great to have somebody that works for the city that really emulates those uh, values in their personal life as well as at work. So if Mike doesn't want to say anything, you want to say anything, Nancy? <laughs> thank you guys for taking him off my hands. <laughs> 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 So, thank you, Mike. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Mike has a lot of fans, too. <laughs> <coughs> Last chance to come say something, Mike. 
Okay. <laughs> Next is a presentation and possible action on the reappointment of members to the Library Advisory Board. <coughs> Lisa Northrop. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we have two applications for reappointment to the Library Advisory Board. The first one is um, Sandra Schmeckley. Sandra, I started out even before I came on council doing library board, and Sandra has been there as long as I can remember. She is an institution and an exceptional attribute to the Library Advisory Board. Um, we also have um, Abigail Patton, who has been, she's been there for a while, but she's looking um, to step back in and continue serving on the library board. These are both ladies that they embody what it is to be an individual in the community that wants to step out and be part of a board or um, commission within the city. And they, they take great, great, um, what I'm looking for, they take, even though people may think it's not as big of a deal for something like a library board, they, they are very involved, they're very engaged, and um, they, they bounce back and round, back and forth, who's the president and who's the vice president and who the secretary is, and you know, they work so well together. It's been a, it's been a pleasure, you know, being their council liaison, you know, for the last couple of years. But with that, I would like to make a, um, a motion to reappoint Sandra Schmeckley and Abigail Patterson to the Library Advisory Board. Second. I have a motion by Lisa Northrup and a second by Kevin Lindell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. You may inform them they're reappointed. I will do so. Thank you very much. Thank them for their service. Will do. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a public hearing before the city council before the city council of the city of Fort Morgan acting as the liquor licensing authority for the city to determine whether the application for a hotel <laughs> restaurant liquor license for Peppers LLC is the applicant should be granted or denied this hearing will be conducted pursuant to the laws of the state of the Colorado and ordinances and procedures of the city of Fort Morgan the purpose of this hearing is to receive information, data, and testimony by any interested parties in order to enable the city to make the findings and reach conclusions required to be made by state law as to whether or not the application should be approved or denied. One of the principal questions the council will be concerned with throughout the hearing will be hearing relates to the reasonable requirements of the neighborhood for the out outlets applied for and the desires of the inhabitants of that neighborhood with respects to the outlet. Those persons who will be heard during this hearing are parties of interest who are defined by state law as being the applicant, residents, and new neighborhood and owners or managers of businesses located in the neighborhood. In order for of this hearing, the order of this hearing will be as follows. <clears throat> At the conclusion of my opening comments, staff will report <coughs> on the public notice of the hearing, postings of the property, status of fingerprint reports, presentations of the applicant, the application, review of the petition, the applicant will present their case meaning they will present testimony, exhibits, petitions, and other materials relevant to the application. Interested parties may then testify for or against the proposed application, after which the applicant will have the opportunity for rebuttal. At the conclusion of all testimony, the council will make its decision and approve or deny the application. All testimony will be given under oath by the city clerk. Any exhibits, will presented during the hearing will be submitted to the city clerk to become part of the record. The city clerk's official files are hereby admitted to the record of this hearing. Council previously set the boundaries of the neighborhood for this license and the entire city of the Fort Morgan. Does anybody present object to the boundaries of the neighborhood? 
will proceed to the public hearing. Legal notice, Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this uh, public hearing was noticed to the <coughs> by a legal notice in the Fort Morgan Times on December 17th, and also posting of a sign on the actual property for 10 days beginning December 16th. Police review. Are we following this script? This is. No, we're done with this, that script. Is okay. Done. Now I'll kind of pre present the application. Presentation by the app of the applicant. <coughs> application, Mr. Brennan. Okay. So this is an application that we originally received in October. Uh, worked with the applicant on it had it reviewed by my office, the city attorney's office, and the police department, it was deemed to be complete. It was brought to the council in uh, December, early December, and we set this public hearing for tonight because of uh, quirk in the calendar, we had to wait a month, so. Um, I should note that the applicant was asked to be present tonight for to answer questions, and he is not. I don't know if anybody else representing him might be, but I don't believe so. So uh, the council should be aware of that. Um, otherwise, his uh, application is complete. All the paperwork appears to be in order. All the fees have been paid, and the public notices have been made, and as the uh, opening comments by the mayor made clear, the primary purpose of this hearing is to um, establish what's called needs and desires. And the easiest way to do that is through petitions. There's Petitions aren't required and there's no set number of signatures that you need, but it's easier than asking, you know, a dozen or dozens of people to come to the city council meeting and say they want you to get this liquor license. So. He submitted um, 60 signatures, um, which is basically, he filled out all the sheets we gave him. Um, I'm sure he could have gotten more, but um, 29 had to be disqualified because they were not residents of the city. That's not uncommon. A lot of times people don't read the fine print and realize they have to live in the city. So um, in any case, we haven't received any uh, written or verbal comments either for or against the issuance of the license. Um, I don't believe the restaurant, this is a hotel and restaurant license, I don't believe the restaurant is operating as yet, um, but uh, once it's open and um, the premises are completed, then the police department would do an inspection of the premises to make sure everything matched with the application. Um, so basically that's it and um, staff recommends that the licensing authority weigh the evidence presented at the hearing which consists of the petitions and uh, make an objective decision on the application for a new hotel and restaurant liquor license. Okay. So the next one I imagine we won't get comments from the applicants. No, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> <coughs> Public comment. Is there anybody that wishes to address this for or against? Public comments, oral or written, Mr. Brennan. Uh, none. Comments by the City Council. <laughs> Is it common that we would have somebody come looking for a liquor license prior to having um, a restaurant opened? Yeah. It just, it seems to me that this is, for lack of a better word, backwards. I mean, they're applying for a liquor license for a restaurant that doesn't exist. Right. Yeah, they plan to open with the liquor license. I'm not sure if they're through the building department process or what. It's in the shopping center on Railroad Avenue. But um, I think the Note nightclub was that way. Uh, Casa Patron had their license for like two years before they opened oh, okay. because they had problems with CDOT and things like that. <coughs> okay. 
yeah, it's, it's not that uncommon. It would obviously have been, it would have been my preference to have the applicant here to answer some questions. Mine as well, and I, I did speak to him. He was in my office a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I confirmed the date with him. I just texted Jill, and uh, she was also sent a letter, so I can't explain it. Okay. Any other comments by council? I read through it again yesterday, but um, it's, so it's the same owner group as Agapapa Bay. It is. Um, and then the report that they have <coughs> midway through that um, liquor license issues that they've had with that license, correct? Correct. Okay. So I guess, yeah. I'm concerned because I, yeah. Since they have previous violations with their current license, I'd like to talk them through what system they have in place to prevent that at their new establishment, but I don't know how we want to handle that as a group today. I guess we'll get to that when we talk to the attorney. All right. If that's what your desires are. Does anybody else have any comments on council regarding this license application? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So, so moved. Second. I have a motion by Lisa Northrup and a second by Clint Anderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Same sign for opposed. Motion carries. Council action, Mr. Wilson, how would we address council member <coughs> Howell's concerns? Well, Mayor and Council, I think you have the option to this evening of taking action on a resolution to approve or not approve uh, this license application, or you, I believe, could defer that action to a subsequent meeting in order to have those questions answered by the applicant. John, do you yeah. is it say anything? I think they could just continue the public hearing and, um, you know, until he shows up. We can put it on the next agenda and okay. that works. If you have questions, then I think, you know, they're, they Need should be do. answered and you can, you can put this thing off to another meeting. Is that your... Desired. That would be my desire, but I'm just one voice, so. Well, you. I think it's a good idea. You can make the resolution be here. to fit what your desires are, and we will we'll vote on it. But I agree with you. I feel like our responsibility as a local liquor licensing authority is well, they should be able to come and hang out with us for a little bit so we can um, just make sure that we're clear on our, our expectations for preventing underage drinking, so. Um, okay, I would offer So yeah, Your Honor, I offer resolution to, um, do I just move the entire public hearing or? Just continue yeah. this agenda item to okay. um, January 21st. So yeah, Your Honor, I offer resolution to move this, um, to continue this public hearing to our next um, scheduled reg regular city council meeting on January 21st. Second. Okay, I have a resolution by Allison Howe, and a second by Lisa Northrup. All in favor, vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. <coughs> okay. You'll inform them? <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> Next is a presentation of possible action on a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Northeastern Colorado Health Department. Mr. Wells. Thank you, Your Honor, and we also have representative from the uh, Health Department here tonight. Uh, we met in executive session to review the, um, the intergovernmental agreement that is in the packet 
and we have worked with uh, the health department to finalize those uh, points within the intergovernmental agreement. I think it's important to note that this is just uh, an agreement for us to cooperate together to uh, provide opportunities for the health department to address their facility situation and to also provide the city with potential facilities that we're going to need in the future. I think it's a great use of uh, public funds, which all come from the taxpayers, both for the health department as well as for the city of Fort Morgan. And um, we would recommend that the council approve the intergovernmental agreement with the um, conditions that uh, are in the IGA presented to you and that were discussed in the executive session. And we can answer any questions you might have. Okay, can you kind of give a, an overview of <clears throat> what this agreement? Certainly. So um, one of the things uh, <clears throat> that we're going to be looking at in the future is addressing some of the health care costs uh, issues that are that we're seeing in the uh, self-insurance plan for our health health care for our employees and one of the things that we've been spending a lot of time looking at is a dedicated health care clinic and when uh, this came to me uh, looking at some possible uh, I guess solutions to their problem which they're out of space um, they're trying to they've looked at adding on to the building uh, if they add on to the building they don't have enough parking in the downtown area. We know how important parking is to downtown businesses. Um, we uh, looked at, you know, various costs of, and then she's looking at various costs that it'll take to modify the building they're in. We have this piece of property over in Center Point that's right next to the Banner Clinic. And the Banner, we have several health clinics in that stretch. And so it fits in to that spot from a zoning perspective. And it's kind of an odd little square at the end of uh, that row of clinics along there. It seemed to fit really well. So what we're looking at is uh, providing uh, input and information that they need to determine whether or not it's going to be economically feasible to construct a new building on that lot. Uh, and in exchange for our participation in that, part of this construction will include uh, a standalone clinic for the city of Fort Morgan. Um, for employees if we decide to go down that road. Uh, what we would agree to is provide the property to Northeast Colorado Health Department and um, the connections for uh, utilities so that they can build it in exchange for facilities that we could use down the road. So that's generally what we're agreeing to at this point. At any point, uh, you know, the health department come back and say, you know, it's not gonna work for us. If something comes up, it's not gonna work for us. We can. Uh, and the, the agreement, it's not a hard and fast contract, but it's an agreement for us to work together to help the health department and the health department to help us. So is this a, as far as the construction on it, is this a city, are we building the building? Are they building the building? Are we helping with the building for the space you're with wanting to acquire? Or yeah, I th what we're looking at now is kind of our in-kind I guess uh, would cover the building costs for what we need um, and they would be building it. it would be their building they would own it they'd own the property um, and then we would work out uh, maintenance agreements on you know what what part of the building do we maintain after it's constructed but uh, my understanding and I think what we're working towards is that our donation of the property and the connections to utilities would cover our portion of the cost of construction. I just asked. Yeah, no, no, it's a good I question. Was quizzed on it or asked, and I didn't have an uh, appropriate answer. No, I, and that's a really good question. Um, but it will be Northeastern Colorado Health Department's building their project, their construction. So this will replace what they're currently in on real railroad. Oh. Trish, I don't know if you wanted to add <coughs> anything. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> Everybody at home wants to hear you. <laughs> so, so riveting. Um, as 
as Jeff said, we've been outgrowing our current um, building for some time, and so we've been looking at other options. And so when I had talked with Jeff about different possibilities, this just kind of um, worked out really well that we could potentially partner um, the building. I'm working on plans for what a new construction, what it would cost our agency as well as what um, to potentially modify, remodel, update, add on to our existing building and just kind of weighing out the pros and cons. But our plan is as an agency that once we really know which one would be most feasible for us is that we will um, leverage existing funding as well as go out after additional funding through capital grants and um, other programs like through DOLA. Um, we'll definitely try to hit all the, the different potential funders that are available to help us pay the, the cost for it. Okay. Any other questions for me? Yeah, Melvin can never retire. What was the question? <laughs> question? He asked if Bustos would go with us. That is in referring um, to Mel Bustos, who's our um, environmental health manager. And yes, he would have to go with us. Is USDA <laughs> in that building also? No, they are actually they on the same block, but they're farther east. East, okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. One other benefit I'd point out, uh, Your Honor, is that um, with our contribution uh, of the property and uh, the utilities connections, it provides them also some uh, matching funds for some of these grants that they can go and get. They've got mm -hmm. hard assets they can say, you know, this property's worth this much money and we're putting it in there so that we can leverage more grants from other places. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can get Dola to pay for all of it. That would be wonderful. Well, and I think too, um, just as Jeff had mentioned, as far as having other health agencies in that vicinity, I think that the clients that we serve, it would be very convenient for them. We do a lot of referrals between our office and Centennial or Salude or DHS, and with everybody being fairly centrally located, I think it would make it a lot easier for families that have transportation challenges, um, that they're able to just kind of it's an easy walking um, area for people to uh, access any of the services. Okay, Great. okay. thank you for your consideration. Thank you. <coughs> so this is strictly an MOU? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. there's no other questions or comments, I would entertain action. Your Honor, I would offer resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Northeast Colorado <coughs> Health Department. Second. I have a resolution by Lisa Northrup and a second by Kevin Lindell. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. Next is a presentation adjusting electric rates. This is either going to be good or bad. Let's make it good. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to raise them, but no, you changed my mind. No. Um, <laughs> we men mentioned this in December that we were in the midst of uh, doing a quick uh, snapshot analysis of our electric fund. Um, I had a nice conversation with the reporter from the newspaper and explaining how when we collect money through our gas and our electric, our rates, part of that rate is just a pass-through rate. Whatever we're paying for electricity on the day is what we're trying to recover from our customers. And we have the other part of our charge that we, we gather the revenue we need to actually run the utility. And so we keep this account that basically has we never get the number right. The cost of electricity on any given day or any given minute is different than what we anticipate it being. And so at sometimes we're over collecting money from our customers and sometimes we're under collecting. And we try to 
So at a rate that we're hitting that in the middle, so at the end of the day, we're just collecting just enough. But we miss it on occasion, and so we go back in and do these type of adjustments. Um, we've been very fortunate on the electric fund that we've actually had the rate set a little bit too high, and so we've been over collecting for a while. We came to in front of you last, um, I think it was last November, or not 2019, but 2018 November, and made a request to lower that rate at that time. Um, the summer came and went, and we didn't have the type of electrical demand on our system that we normally see. A lot of that has to do with the irrigation load that we have around the city. And so we've just continued to accumulate more revenue in that, in that fund. And so we felt it necessary to go ahead and make another adjustment downwards in order to get that count of, um, basically balanced out. And so, so what you have in front of you tonight is another adjustment um, just a little over a year ago since we made the last one that would uh, decrease that electric rate um, on the energy side of things. It's not a decrease in the entire portion of your electric bill. So that was part of the conversation I had with the, somebody today. And um, it's just the energy side of that. And so it's about 10% decrease, a little over 10% decrease on the on the rate side or on the electric side of it, the energy side. And so we're hoping that over the next several years that type of decrease will get us back to where we've balanced the fund and then we can stabilize the rate again and be in good shape. So so a little bit of a late Christmas gift. Um, gave you a heads up back in December, but finally got the analysis ready and we're ready to put it into place. So be happy to answer any questions. Well, the obvious question is for the rate pair is for a typical residential customer, what is that? Uh, in his report, I think it was six dollars and a month. I should have had that page like open. I remember. <clears throat> I swear I just read. Yeah, it was six dollars and change. Six dollars and seventy-three cents. That's somebody <laughs> that uses eight hundred and eighty-three kilowatt hours per the month. Don't know. I think that's one of those standards, industry standards that you use for residential consumption. Strictly the energy side. Yeah, just strictly the energy side. Not proposing any changes to the the other charges. Okay. Anybody have any questions? And this, um, and I probably already read this, but I got lost in the tables. Um, it's effective. We want to make it effective the bills that people will be receiving here later in January. Okay. So it basically is the bill for whatever you're using for the month of January 2020. And it should be pretty, a pretty easy transition with um, yes. utility billing folks. Yep. They're ready? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Good news? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I offer a resolution to adjust to approve the adjustment of the electric rates for the electric department and system enterprise. Second. I have a resolution by Allison Howe and a second by Kevin Lindell. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> Next is presentation on the first reading of an ordinance establishing center point design standards and request to schedule a public hearing on the ordinance for January 21st. Uh, Ms. Crosswaite and Mr. Glanmeyer. Well, we talked about this at the last meeting um, and you've had the standards in front of you here. So this is first reading of the ordinance. Um, we, I've not received any comments for or against uh, the standards, but they've been out there for a little while and so we have had conversations with uh, at least some of the potential developers and, and I think no issues there. So I think these are ready for your uh, adoption on first reading tonight. Questions or comments? No, I think we talked, when we talked about this the last time, it's, I think it's very forward thinking for us to be establishing this and getting it set so that we're putting the best possible piece of property out there 
and being able to entice more people into wanting to come because of what <coughs> the area looks like. So I applaud your guys' efforts for putting this on <coughs> Something I didn't ask you last time, because I concur, I, and I said that last time that I thought that the insight and everything else was, how'd you come up with these? Would you use as a template or you just come up with it on your own or? Yeah, this actually started when, when Jenny Elric was here and she had researched several standards. Uh, we'd worked with uh, Jason Myers some at the time and then Nina and Jeff's firm have been able to help as well. These are out there in the world and so they've been able to pluck templates from other communities and, and suggestions and ideas and so we just kind of took the best of what we thought all of those were and put them together and, and Sarah did the lion's share of the work with these. So I think just being able to cherry pick the things that we really liked from other communities was real helpful. And Jeff's firm and, and, and Jason when he was here and Jenny for their work as well, so. Right, cool. Yeah. Anyone else? I would entertain a resolution. John, this ordinance number that has the question mark by, is it 1241 or? Uh, no, on first okay. reading it doesn't have a number, just Got it. an ordinance. So just a suggestion, right? right. <laughs> Your Honor, after resolution um, to accept the first reading of the ordinance establishing center point design standards and request to schedule the public hearing for January 21st. Second. Kevin. <laughs> I have a resolution by Allison Howe and a second by Kevin Lindell. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. All right, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. A lot of work. Next is a presentation on increasing expenditures to fully utilize the DOLA grant for city campus design. Mr. Wells. Thank you very much. I appreciate the, your honor for the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about an opportunity we have uh, to further some of the work that we're doing at the uh, campus, the city center campus, which includes the field house, um, utilities, public works buildings, as well as a potential city hall. One of the things that um, there's several points that I want to make, but if you look at the, um, the memo in the file, one of the things that happened when we went out and got the bid on this <coughs> was we assumed that it was 50-50. And so we've been under the, I guess, the assumption that it would be a 50-50 match, $800,000 from uh, DOLA, $800,000 from us. We went through uh, this project and cut it down from a $2 million project to a $1.6 million project to meet those expectations. Uh, recently, when we started our first billing of the project to DOLA, they said, well, this is a 60-40 split on a $2 million project, which means that uh, we were $400,000 short on our share of the 60%. There's two options that we had, and we discussed them both with uh, the DOLA representatives, and the first one was, um, you know, let's just reduce the grant number down. It'll be 60-40 on $1.6 million, which would only require the city then to come up with an additional $160,000 to cover our difference of the grant. The more preferred method from the DOLA representatives was we go ahead and finish out the grant, and there's some benefits to finishing out the ground at a $2 million amount, which we go back to an additional $400,000. The benefits to, to doing that are, first, we've already authorized money to be spent above and beyond what was in the design amount. So for example, uh, council has authorized staff to hire a cost estimator, which was somewhere around $30,000, to come in and make sure that the numbers that we are getting from the design experts uh, match up with what the budget is. And that's been a very helpful process. The other thing is that uh, we came to council and asked for a pre-engineered metal building um, contractor and we chose uh, Big Johnson Buildings who has been working with us a ton to make that happen and their overall pre-construction costs uh, and design costs were somewhere between 58 and 75,000 dollars 
depending on where that number comes in at, uh, for them to assist us in the pre-design process that we're going through right now. Again, that's been very helpful for everybody in the design team to make sure that we're meeting that. So when you look at it, uh, those numbers would not be reimbursed under the current grant and council authorized us to move forward with that and we are gonna roll that into the construction costs. If we move forward with the grant as proposed and recommended by the DOLA representatives, that money can be put, uh, can be applied toward the matching requirement for up to the $2 million. So what we're really looking at um, is coming up with somewhere around $300,000 to finish out the grant. The additional benefit of finishing out the grant at the $2 million amount is that gives us some additional money for work that can be done by the um, our design experts and consultants that was previously considered in the $2 million project that we took out in order to meet the $1.6 million budget. For example, uh, the, the majority of that money, if not all that money, would go towards the final construction documents for a phased uh, construction of uh, public works and utilities buildings for the complex. Uh, we would obviously be focusing on the first phase in the near future, which would be a replacement of the streets department buildings and the sanitation buildings, uh, which are in need of dire repair and upkeep. Part of the design requirements under DOLA is that they are LEED certified, meaning that they will be um, much better insulated. Uh, they will provide a better environment for the workers uh, as well as uh, more cost effective because of the uh, energy savings that you get from the building. So we're recommending that council authorize us to go ahead and move forward with the full $2 million project, which would give us then design uh, prints to build in the future when council decides the utilities and public works building, <coughs> which right now we would just be getting rough sketches and uh, site plan for those buildings. Um, what we'll end up with when it's all said and done is uh, design prints, uh, actually not design prints, uh, construction CD, construction documents for the field house that we are going to use to bid the project and that's coming up in the next few months. The second uh, thing we'd get is construction documents for the future construction of the public works and utilities building and then we would have a site plan for the city hall, no further work for construction documents or anything would be done on City Hall uh, in the near future or the foreseeable future until council said we're ready to look at that piece. And you know, down the road if council decides they don't want to do that there, we can make that decision. The benefit of moving forward with the recommendation of the DOLA um, representatives is that we've currently got in front of them um, two different uh, grant uh, applications. The first one is a million dollars for the construction of the field house. And we want to be able to come back to them and say that we fully utilized the grant money that they've given us, to us in the past. We know that uh, it's not their favorite thing to invest in, but it's definitely something we're going to try and get some money back from them on that. Uh, and when we follow through on this grant, I think it's helpful in the next process to get additional money for the construction of the project. Um, the other uh, benefit of following through with what the uh, grant um, or the DOLA representatives have uh, suggested that we do is that we maintain that ongoing uh, credibility with DOLA that when we get a grant that we follow through and we get it taken care of. So with that, I'm sure you have a lot of questions and uh, I'm here to answer those. Uh, Steve's here to answer them and we even have the technical folks from RSNH that are here to answer any questions as it relates to the design. So. Anybody got any questions? Okay, I got a couple. Um, first off, you stated that the DOLA rep gave us two options adjust to what we currently have, which would be 160,000 of ours, or up it to the two million, and we pay 400,000 as a, a added to our portion, correct? Yes. Okay. So of those two, we're, 
currently at the 1.6, and it's just a misunderstanding of the 60-40 as opposed to the 50-50, correct? Yes. <clears throat> That's good. Okay. Um, wasn't the cost estimator part of the original RFP for the consultants? Yeah, he was, uh, Ron, but we, when we tried to get, uh, you know, the $2 million project down to $1.6 million, we stripped some of those things out. Uh, cost estimating, CMGC, uh, design of these facilities to construction document, those are things that we started to take out to get down to $1.6 million. Um, so we had to add that back in in order to, you know, verify those costs, and that's why we came back to you to, to, to do that, uh, knowing it was going to be above the 1.6 million that we originally budgeted. And, and to be clear, the f the 400,000 includes 200,000 in additional grant money, so our actually out of pocket expense is 200,000. We we'd spend 400, but we'd get 200 back from DOLA. That's the that's, or in that range. I mean, we're, we're gonna have a $2 million project and we're gonna get a million dollars in grant. Is that correct? But we'll get 800,000. Yeah, 800,000, yeah. We'll get the full 800,000. Yeah, that's correct. We'll get the full 800,000. So yeah, that's correct, yeah. And is it correct that, so we'll have shovel ready designs for the field house and this additional funding is to make sure we get that next lap done for streets and utilities? <laughs> so what we authorized tonight would be helping those departments the most or yeah the authorizing this tonight gets you shovel ready construction documents for streets sanitation and utilities okay. in a phased design cool. the design team's done a really good job of phasing that building recognizing that streets and sanitation is the most critical piece Mm -hmm. And utilities, you know, is something that's that's out there in the future, uh, but the building's designed in such a way that we could go ahead and build streets and and sanitation, and then come back later and construct utilities as as that need, you know, rose to the top. Okay. Yeah. So this two million is strictly design, or the the field house is not part of this. No, it is. Uh, 1.6 million of that was what we budgeted for design of the field house. Yeah. Where are we at with the field house as far as design? Costs and yeah, we're 30 ish, 40 ish percent uh, design on construction documents for the field house. Cost wise, I think we're. I'm not exactly sure what the last billing was. I'd have to go back and look, but we're on track at the 1.6 million. We're not going to go above that for right. design so of the what field I guess house. What I'm asking that I've asked for numerous times oh. is, what are the costs of the field oh, house? Oh, yeah, right. And we're so still we're refining those. 10 million at one time, yep. and then when it brought back, it was right in, in excess of that. Yep. And I've, I've had a lot of comments yeah. from the community regarding that and yep. so yeah it's a good question Ron and we continue to refine those construction costs but we are at 10 million uh, with a half a million dollar contingency at the moment and we're continuing to refine those costs down um, so our last cost estimator had us you know right at the 10 million dollars and that included that half million dollar in contingency so nine 9.5 million is what the cost is estimated at currently for the facility. And that's complete construction of the field house. And the outside improvements, landscaping, road, parking lot, uh, building, um, everything inside except for finishes, fixtures, and equipment. And we're working on those costs as well, but that's not included in the 9.5 million. Okay, does that include the last presentation we had one portion that was not finished um, didn't have the flooring it was just going to be an open space is that portion completed or is that still an incomplete portion of the interior yeah i believe the last cost estimate actually had a floor as an alternate in there um, so that's the 9.5 million wouldn't include the floor in that room but it is constructed um, and so 
card. And that may be wrong, actually. The floor is. The floor would be a finished concrete floor, so it would be movable. Yeah. Yeah, it would have a concrete floor in it. It just wouldn't have a an athletic floor in it. Um, so that's we're continuing to look at those and see if there's some way we can get that athletic floor at least installed in there and, and the equipment, the basketball hoops, if you will, in that room as well. Which serves a purpose. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and the other thing that we plan to do, <clears throat> and we've been talking about this internally and we've talked to a, a few of the local businesses, is looking at some sponsorships of various parts of the building as well. Um, you know, the gym floor, the wood gym floor for the two courts is gym floors are extremely expensive I didn't realize how expensive those things are uh, but they're very expensive and and they have to be built a certain way and they have to have certain finishes underneath and um, and so you know some of the things we're looking at is is determining whether or not we can get local sponsorship to help pay for some of the interior finishes and some of the uh, finish furnishings and finishing uh, when it's all done um, but yeah to answer your question the number that we're we're We've really tied the uh, the consultants to is 10 million is is that is the number uh, that we can't and then of course built in with the contingency yeah. that we hope to come in under part of the process moving forward will be and we actually discussed it a little bit today is going out and looking and getting an RFQ uh, request for qualifications for um, a general contractor to come in at this point and start working on part of the final process of, uh, of the design and then be ready for uh, bids going out here early in, I don't know, about April, May. Yeah, April, May is the idea. Okay. Yeah. We met as late as five o'clock today and we're looking at still how can we cut costs on, on the building and identified additional cuts already um, you know, these are order magnitude 10,000 to 50,000. So, point they're yep. smaller cuts. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but, ads, yeah. but, but they definitely are adding up, and we recognize 10 million is 10 million, and, and we're not going to go above that. And if, you know, we, we want to be below 9.5, recognizing we have a half a million dollar contingency for those unforeseen things. Uh, Big Johnson's doing a great job of helping us identify areas that we can cut but um, you know we're continuing to find a hundred thousand here ten thousand here fifty thousand here seven thousand here and and they're starting to add up into hundreds of thousands of dollars and that's that's helping tremendously now the, the, you're not cutting by removing Correct. space or right utilization things that would be utilized yep these may be things that are uh, sometimes uh, aesthetically pleasing but uh, we can we can remove those and still have a building at the end of the day so that when you walk in you can shoot baskets right but it may not this panel instead of being this direction is turned this direction with all the rest of them and it may not be uh, a, a different type of, of color steel or something of this nature it's things like that or just changing a roof pitch to a different type of pitch that's maybe not as aesthetically pleasing but certainly keeps the rain out of the building um, it's those types of things that I think architectural elements that we can we can remove but still have a nice building at the end of the day. It really well, does I look nice. Use, usability, I guess. Yep. Like Clint had brought up yep. at the last time regarding, you know, this will meet our future yep. needs and carry us. We're not cutting. Right. Same, same square footage. Uh, for instance, we removed uh, seventy-ish thousand of landscaping. You're taking but out jogs and making them yep. straight walls. Yep. Our, okay. Things like that. Um, the landscaping we we basically pared down. It's it's going to have a lot of nice landscaping, but but not the full landscape plan that we initially saw. Um, but going to be very nice for for our area for sure. Yeah. It will still meet the design standards for Center Point. It does. Yes, well, it actually, does. <laughs> that lot Great is excluded question. from the design standards. And it has a child watch room. <laughs> That's yeah. very good. I don't know. Didn't I read in those design standards that you couldn't have a certain length of wall? Without That's why that lot's excluded from the it? design standards. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It does. <laughs> Correct. Uh oh. Yep. Those are all good questions, Ron, and I appreciate that because that has been heavy on our mind as well. And 
and I thank the design team for spending a lot of time over the holidays uh, looking for additional cuts. Jeff and I had a conversation with them right before the holidays and, and you know, made it very clear. $10 million is $10 million. It's not $10 million one. And they've done a great job of, of working hard to make sure that we hit that target. So and just, just to take all that and I guess shorten it into we're, you're asking for 400000 We've already spent 100000 that we would get reimbursed. And then the grant would match us, reimburse us 200000 No, I, I misspoke there, Clint. He, Je Jeff's right. I mean, we have $1.6 million grant, and so the 400000 does come out, of, come out of our pocket. That is correct. I'm sorry that I, I misspoke oh, on that. Oh, okay. yeah. we've already spent about 100000 yep. so Yeah, already, we've already spent about 100000 We needed to spend about another 300000 to to utilize the full $1.6 Yeah, I apologize for that. I cannot keep this straight for some reason. It's okay. just <laughs> muddied in my mind. Not all of us are so, math. Yeah, to simplify what we're looking for, uh, Councilman Anderson, is that uh, authorization to spend up to the full $2 million uh, and, and grant and meet the grant requirements of DOLA, um, which then would be that additional $300,000. Yeah. yeah. Which would get us construction documents for a phased construction of the Public Works and Utilities Building. Yeah. Where is this money budgeted and where does it come from? So uh, that is a very good question. The money would come from reserves, um, and uh, it's not currently budgeted in uh, the 2020 budget. So in order to keep the grant as it currently is, make our 10%, we will still have to come up with 160000 to yep. meet our portion of the non-50-50 grant what's the downside if we do the 160 and and just come up with what our current grant is with the 1.6 from our conversations with the dola reps the downside is that it, the, then they have to go back in and reappropriate <coughs> how they set up the grant so they have to put money back in and that looks like they've had to modify the contract with the city the downside is it looks like we didn't follow through on what our con contractual requirement was and when we go and ask for more money it could potentially be uh, a black mark against us um, i'd say that's the downside the other downside is that in the future we're going to have to spend that money anyways uh, to get the final construction documents for this building and we know that if we go out and bid the final design on this it's probably going to end up being more expensive because we got to bring the team back a uh, team comes back on maybe a new team um, we have to rebid the process and it'll take additional time um, so I think that's probably the downside and and either way whatever council decides to do we'll move forward with it um, but yeah I, I think the, da the the opportunity to finish out the construction documents and leverage the money that we've spent above and beyond uh, for the PMB contractors and the um, the one guy what's his name uh, the estimator. Estimator. Cost estimator. Yeah. Yeah. cost estimator yeah cost estimator uh, is outweighs kind of the the not you know spend that extra it's basically an additional hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars at this point it sounds to me like you're spending a hundred and we're, we're spending hundred and forty thousand dollars to get ready-made plans so that we can do sanitation <laughs> and everything and get that building going and since those buildings are in such bad disrepair and that's on the very near horizon as far as something we need to do I think that that's probably makes uh, fiscal responsibility standards for us Well, we've already got, we will have partial documents. I mean, they're not read, they're not go to ready. Right. So, I mean, right. a quarter of a million dollars to finish out what we would need for the um, sanitation or street department buildings is, if it costs a quarter of a million dollars for design 
and upgrading that, then I just I don't see that part of it. I guess I'm in favor of doing the 160, meeting our current grant, and moving along with what we have have there. Um, just to be clear, it's a design of the entire building, which would include in the future water, sewer, electric, and gas offices as well. So it it is a it's a big building that encompasses all of those departments in the future. Not to say it has to be built all at one time because it is phased, but it, the design is for the entire facility, which would in, which would house all of those departments: streets, sanitation, water, sewer, gas, electric. That's and inventory control. Uh, Doug Hoffman, so mechanics bay, all of that. Well, I don't know. I, I still would like to know what we're going to do with all the current buildings that, that were, what utilization are we going to have for those buildings? I mean, we're abandoning a lot of buildings that are still usable, um, have some deferred maintenance that is done, needs done to them, but I just, you know, that whole area across Sherman Street there, that's a, a large chunk. We're, we're leaving the senior center building. We've got the current city hall. We've got the gas building, the electric building, the inventory control, the yard that encompasses that, the property in between the uh, Humane Society, the Humane Society building. That's I, I just, that, that's a large <coughs> object to walk away from it and vacate with what we currently have as a vacated buildings in our community already. And I, I think that's a very important point to bring up and something we definitely need to keep in the discussion. Um, when you look at uh, what we're trying to accomplish here, it's not to build a new building. I mean, it's to have it ready when we get ready to go and, and do it. Um, I don't see that we'll be building these buildings in the foreseeable future. The primary one is the field house. We're gonna be focused on that. I think the benefit that we have of finishing it out is that when you're ready to build a public works and a streets, we've got the construction documents ready for bid and we can go to DOLA and say, look, we're ready to build this now here's the documents, here's what we believe it's gonna be, and we can move forward with it as opposed to having to go back into the budget and come up with additional money, which will be above $250,000 to finish out that set and um, then have it ready to go to DOLA. I think it helps us in the future to have that ready. In the meantime, I think what you're saying, Mayor, it makes perfect sense that we have to be looking at what are we going to do with these facilities and how are we going to use them moving forward. Um, one of the issues that we have um, in the current complex, um, and this building as well, is there's no more space. Um, when you add a position, you need another office. And uh, we've cut up the, the complex in so many different ways, as, as you know, that uh, the heater for Jeannie's office is in um, Sarah's office, and Sarah, um, comes from warmer climates <laughs> and as a result turns the heater up and uh, anyways we've, we've got we, we also know that um, with some of the additional positions that we've added we're going to need some additional space um, and you know we're not looking to build brand new for all of those things right now we know it's going to take time and it's going to take additional planning and what do we do and how do we repurpose some of these old buildings and that is a question we don't have all of the answers to, and we definitely wouldn't encourage council to build a new facility until we had those questions answered. But I think at this point, what we're asking is let's have it ready to go so we don't have to go back and do one more step when it's time. And I think um, I think we, we can all agree that we do have some buildings that need, and some facilities that need to be replaced. The question is, how are we going to finance it and what are we gonna do with the old buildings? At this point, we're just trying to answer the question, what is that building gonna look like? What is it probably going to cost to build? And how do we leverage um, 
funding in the future for that. So that's kind of what we're hoping if we go finish out the contract. So, and also to be clear, if we do the 160, we will have to go back and amend the contract with DOLA and they will have to, um, what's it called? Um, they'll have to kick some fund, they'll have to change what they've set aside for the funding and they get frustrated when you have to do that. But again, you know, that is an option that we can go back. They've recommended it and we're not the first ones that would ever do that, I, I guarantee you. Right. Yeah. Um, what I'm looking for is we stay with the 1.6 that we stay at. We, are, we will have partial documents for, we'll get the full field house that we have to have those because we are moving forward with that. But for the rest of it, we will have partial documents. They are not construction ready. Correct. And there's, there's a little bit that's got to go on that to make them construction ready. What w is the cost that would, co would cost us to have those documents and upgrade those, get them to construction grade? Quarter of a million dollars? Yeah, for the utilities and streets and sanitation building, it's about $300,000. For City Hall, I don't have an estimate on that. Steve, if we were to go this route with the, and, and maybe this is also a question for R.S.N.H., and um, if we were to go this route where we uh, modify the DOLA contract, pay the $160,000 to finish out the field house and and move forward with that part of the project and come back in a year or two years mm -hmm. and finish out the the phased uh, public works utility building what what would be the cost differential you think from spending the the three hundred thousand to finish it out now versus in two or three years do you think it'll go up to go down well it's going to go uh, up in yeah. two or three years yeah i'm certain it would go up but i can't give you an order of magnitude i have no yeah. idea I don't. yeah yeah and inflation so inflationary standard so we're gonna yeah. have that problem with construction yeah. i mean every year construction yeah. costs and rates go up um that's Give us economics. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say inflationary standard. I have a problem with it. Four hundred thousand not being budgeted mm -hmm. and putting this this out. I don't see Dola coming in and restricting us or not giving us grants or or that. I'm talking with Greg at all on over things. I don't see that we're gonna get <coughs> But you'd say, okay, so it's four hundred thousand dollars if we want to take full advantage, but it'll really only be three hundred thousand because we get it include the uh, hundred thousand we've already spent. So it's a matter of spending three hundred thousand dollars and getting completed plans, or spending one hundred sixty thousand dollars getting partial plans. So I truly can't believe that somewhere down the line it's not going to be. Uh, magnitude of that extra hundred and forty thousand dollars to get those plans completed exactly. so you know basically that's what you're talking about difference between uh, paying 160 or paying three hundred thousand from what we've already done it's four hundred thousand but they said that we'd be able to take the thirty thousand dollars from the cost estimator and put that in as money we've already done plus the other seventy thousand dollars we'd spend on what it's for the pre-engineered metal building for engineering. For the pre-engineered metal yeah. building. So we've already spent $100,000 that is already building. there, and we'd be able to apply it against the four hundred. The pre-engineered building is already not going to be part of this because that's the field house. Well, the engineering we can we can apply toward the grant. They, they have some cost with their engineering design that they're doing as well, you know, working with RS&H, and there's a cost to do that. We can apply that to the grant because it's design work. That, that does count. I've been able to work um, a little bit with RSNH as a fly on the wall for a lot of the field house designs, and I just I think they've been really an exceptional partner. Um, and I can't imagine having to um, go back out to bid in the future for something that they've already done a lot of great work on already for um, for the city. 
Um, and I have a lot of faith in our city staff to have a great transition plan for our current buildings when it's the right time. And I know one thing that's been challenging for the city complex project over the last couple years is just essentially communication to the public that it's not um, this fast track thing that it's, um, there's the phasing is involved and it's, it's gonna take years and years and years instead of we want it done tomorrow. So I think having the plan ready to go um, is super smart. It's efficient to use the same team. Um, so those are kind of, that's my rationale for, I think it's good ideas to get it finished so it's ready when it's the right time and we have a good transition plan in place for the other buildings. I would concur with Council Member Howe and Council Member Rundle. I think we would be spending way more taxpayer dollars down the road in a couple of years to revisit this and finish out existing plans when for a, and, and I understand $400,000 isn't a small amount of money, but in the grand scheme of what it will cost us in the future, I think it's, it is advantageous for us to bite the bullet and spend that now out of reserves to have shovel ready plans. So. Okay, before we go to a vote and, and get all this, I do, I wanna see all of our reserve amounts mm -hmm. and I would like to have ready for the new council and current council all of the grants that we have and what they what we're utilizing them for what they are in the amounts <clears throat> So make sure I understand you want, before you call for a vote, you want to make sure. No, I'm just bringing that out before the, we oh, okay. get off. This is not part of it. This is just a request, request. Of, of information. So for, definitely for we can get guys. all of that. So yeah, no. I Either way, we'll I get apologize. it. I apologize. He's going to say, Jeannie, run back to your office. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm. Yeah. All, so I'll put, so you want all reserves and then all of the, the um, grants. Yeah, a yeah. list of the grants that we have, what they're for, the how they're administered, and okay. what, what their uses are. I think that's a really good question, and then all the reserves. Because okay. I know you guys are working on, at least from your reports, that you're looking at grant administration, and, and yep. that I think council as a governing body needs to have an, yes, I an overview agree. of what all the grants we currently have out there and what they're and what we're trying to get <coughs> no I think that's a very good request we'll get that together as soon as possible <coughs> the field house is a go regardless one way or the other that is going to that's go right. and <coughs> complete it yep. whether we do the 160 and meet our current grant requirements or we do the 400 correct correct yeah yeah we will have construction documents by the end of march for the field house because okay, i know that question is going to come yeah in and out yep. in public yeah that is that is well on track to be finished on design so for under 10 million dollars construction cost <laughs> not including fixtures furnishings and in equipment <laughs> Those will come later. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Can I answer any of the questions on my side? Appreciate the opportunity to just come up and help. Yeah, really? Yeah. Well, sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I bear some of this burden, so I, I feel obligated and responsible to be up here. So. Well, I just I had questions yeah, thrown at fair. me. Um, I've got I've had questions. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you all very much. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Jeff. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Yeah. I got all that from my phone. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question? Can you come up to the front? The, the viewing public wants to see your smiling face. Everybody in our viewing audience needs to hear your, your And if you'd sign in on the log next to the podium. I'm John Biskowski, a resident of Fort Morgan. Um, 
in my observation of uh, what's taking place with uh, from city management to the city council is that seems to me from my viewpoint is that council does not have enough information written documentation to make an adequate decision about funding um, I think you should have it on paper you know what the amounts are what's in reserves how things are going to be paid for before you can even make a decision on anything so trying to do it from verbally I wouldn't even take any action if I was in your position thank you would you sign the sheet here mr. Briskowski I'm sorry sign in on that sheet to the side there log sheet right beside the dais With that, any other questions or comments? No? Um, I guess I've, I've kind of been quiet on this and I've kind of sat back and listened to everything, kind of taken some things, everyone's opinions and thought about it. $400,000 is not a small amount of money by any means. Um, 160000 isn't that small amount either. Uh, we're gonna have to pay one or the other I think in the long run, when you start looking at <coughs> what is going to be the end goal, whether that be 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, what is it that we're wanting to, what is going to be produced? And and the, I guess the end result being how much money is going to be spending developing these plans, it seems to me that the cheapest possibility uh, without predicting the future is going to be the putting up the $400,000. Um, but again, that's still putting up $400,000. And um, I don't know. I, I just, if, if we wait, if we hold off on this, does that delay things? Does that put the city in a bad spot if we delay this until we have more information? Well, the, for the decision today, um, well, we've got to, there, there's a process that DOLA has to go through and they're kind of waiting for us to uh, get back with them. I think their hope is that we'll move forward, but uh, it, it does create some issues uh, if we wait. I think the other, Thing, and, I, and I think that Mr. Bukowski's uh, um, statements are well received and that if you want it on paper and we can get it out there, we definitely can put out, as the mayor requested, what do we have in our reserves? How are we gonna spend those reserves? Um, and, and to answer your question, Clint, it, does it create some issues? It, it does from what we're trying to do with finishing out where the plans go from here. And so, uh, I mean, if you want to put the vote off and wait uh, for a new council, you can do that, um, and we can get you the information that you want. Or, uh, you know, we're here to work for you. So whatever the majority of council wants us to do, we will definitely do it. <coughs> like I said, I know the field house is a is a given. That is one of our. That's going. It, it will be completed. It's part of what we're we're dealing with. Streets and sanitation are the secondary side of it. The rest of it is long term. It's going to be at a minimum three to four years before anything is really done with that. What design standards or code changes 
come in that time period where you have to go back and redo them anyway. Land development is way different than long-term building development. And I know that from some of my background. Um, <clears throat> you know, so those aspects, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm asking about, we have documents, they are not go to bid documents on there, which is fine. We can upgrade them and put a little bit into it and get them to building documents to go out to construction. Um, and I just, you know, I just think 300,000 or 400,000 dollars for that amount of work is It, again, it ends up only being $140,000. I think that's the part that I want to make as far as my understanding is we either pay $160,000 to leave it where it's at, or we pay $300,000, an extra $140,000, and we don't have the hassles with Dola. We do have a uh, construction-ready shovel-in-the-ground uh, programs and uh, layouts for the new buildings and everything so I, I mean you know what it really comes down to is $140,000 I mean I understand if you compare $400,000 but that's not really where it is and so that's why I think that it would be uh, the smartest thing and like I said the most uh, fiduciary responsible to um, go with going up to the full plan well, I guess my math doesn't quite calculate with yours. The 1.6 million that we're at right now for, for the DOLA grant, our additional 60%, 10% cost of that is $160,000 to meet the commitments of the, the current grant that we have. Correct. To take it up to $2 million, which we would have, we have to come up with four hundred thousand dollars no because they said that the thirty thousand dollars that we had for a cost estimator can be written off of it and the seventy thousand dollars are playing big johnson to uh consult on the metal building can be written off so that takes them from four hundred thousand dollars down to three hundred thousand dollars and so then when you compare three hundred thousand dollars to one hundred sixty thousand dollars that's a difference of 140. right because 160 thousand is part of the four hundred thousand I mean, you either pay 160000 or 400000 So it, it's not like it's an, in addition to the 1.6. It's not 5 point. Yeah, we have to pay the 160 right. so, no matter what. Right, it's to not stay within the current agreements of our DOLA grant. To stay within the current amount that uh, it's estimated at. But the, the grant where it's, it's up not to estimated. We have a, a DOLA grant, which is... $1.6 million was supposed to be 50-50 match. It's not a 50-50 match, it is 60-40. We have to come up with an additional 160,000 160, to meet the grant we already have and are utilizing for the field house and, and this current design. So now we're gonna take it up another $400,000. Not another. Jeannie, yeah. can you help us out so we so a couple of things. can keep it super Steve. objective down here? Steve, can you, maybe you can help me also on the contract. Um, the contract with DOLA is a, was originally a $2 million project. We thought it was 50-50, but it was a 60-40, but the contract is still a $2 million project, so we right. have to modify right. the contract to $1.6 million, and we would have to come up with the 160000 for the 60-40 split. Yeah. I believe what will happen if we just keep things the way they are, we'll pay enough to finish out the project because we're not going to get the full 800000 We're going to get less than that. I don't know what the amount is specifically. Um, but And so they will de-obligate whatever that 40% is that we don't spend and um, reduce essentially the grant from what would have been 
see it was 800,000. So, yeah, I mean, I just don't. 50 50 match, 800, 800. 60 40 is the problem. It, we thought it was 50 50, but it's 60 40, and so they'll just de obligate what we don't spend. Yeah, whatever that amount is. Yeah. So, what is it that we wouldn't be spending on the <coughs> 1.6? Well, we'll spend the 1.6. The problem is, is that. The original grant was for two million, so because we're not spending an additional four hundred thousand, we don't get the full eight hundred thousand. So when we submit bills to them, it's at a sixty forty split. So if we submit you know a million dollars, they're going to give us uh, four hundred four hundred thousand, and we'll spend six hundred thousand. So at one point six, whatever that sixty forty is, it's not a full eight hundred thousand. That's that's the challenge that we've run into here. And just with the point that Mayor and I were not understanding or not hitting on, we either pay them a hundred, we either pay an extra hundred and sixty thousand dollars, or we pay an extra three hundred thousand dollars. Correct? Yeah, I mean, in order to receive a full eight hundred thousand dollars, we have to spend two million, two million, two million ish dollars, right, <laughs> to, to get. 40%, 800, 60% on us. So if we don't spend 200 million, or no, I'm sorry. We don't spend million. Two, <laughs> that's sorry, that's sorry, that's sorry. Sorry. different project. Sorry. Right. If we don't spend 2 million. Right, we won't get 800,000 We won't back. get 800. Correct. So it's not a 60-40 split unless we spend 2 million. Correct. Well, it's a 60-40 split, but we just won't receive the full 800,000 at 60-40 unless we spend $2 million. If we only spend 1.6 million, we will get 40% of that back in grant. What's 40% of 1.6 million? Which which leaves us One, that 160. 160. It leaves us the 160 that yeah. we have to make up. Yeah. The, but it's the obligation. But if we spend the 400, if we go up to 2 million, then we'll get 160. We'll get we'll 800,000 800, in grant. But yeah. 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 Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I know the details of the financials are really critical and important, but I, I want us as a group to remember the big picture of this facility for those staff and how it will transform their day-to-day -day lives, how it will transform how they interact with the public and their efficiency. And I think as a city, we've been doing some exceptional work um, with innovation, and I think this is one of those pieces. So um, I think, yeah. yeah, details are very critical, but the the vision of why this campus is critical. Um, I kind of felt some of that electricity with the staff, you know, when they were looking at the different, um, just those collaborative workspaces and just how that will benefit their day-to-day -day work. So I think this sends a message to our staff as well that, um, that they'll have a, a product that's close to ready and when the time is right, it will happen, but we don't wanna unintentionally um, I would just stall for those staff with something that's so critical for their, um, yeah, some of the innovation for their workplace. It's not stalled. I mean, it'll still be there. We're not going to be, we will not be doing this for a minimum of three years. But we'll still be spending that money in three years at a cost of way more than $400,000. Well, I guess my, I, my I'm going to make my last comment on this is we had a budget passed this year that is larger than any one that we had with a lot of additional things coming out of reserve. I'm at a point, 400,000 additional coming out is I, I'm not in favor. That's my vote and, and mine. And I'd have to agree with the mayor on that one. We had a budget set. We should be dealing with that budget. I'd like to know, you know, we've talked about the buildings that we're going to replace. We should have an idea what they're worth yeah. and what we're going to do with them. But I haven't heard that either, like he said, and it'd be nice on paper. Mm -hmm. You know, we got these buildings are both worth $4 million, but are they really? Because we're trying, they're not worth anything. So what, what is that property worth? And do we have somebody that wants to buy it? And that'd be really nice to know, yep, everything goes just fine and and this project goes through, we don't have that much money going out, but I haven't heard anything. So that that's that's where I'm at with this right now too. 
So um, you would like to also see a, a written plan on, or a proposed plan anyways. Obviously, council would have the ultimate direction on that. And what we do with the existing buildings in the event that uh, these get built in the future. Right. Th these other ones. Okay. Yeah, and we how much are they worth? Idea. You know, that we ought to have an idea what they're worth, you know. Okay. I don't need that for this decision. No, but it, it, that's... Um, Can I answer any other questions while I'm okay. up here? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Are you tired of standing up? There? No, I, I, and I'm happy to keep coming back up. Not a problem, but I appreciate the conversation and the questions. Those, those are all good questions for sure. So thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. So I would entertain action or conversation or I would offer a resolution on increasing expenditures to be able to utilize the full two million dollar dola grant second okay vote by roll call that resolution carries on a vote of five to two with council members Shasso and Mayor Shaver voting against. <coughs> Thank you for your time and comments. It's helpful for us. Next item is public comments or audience participation for items not on the agenda. <coughs> Reports by officials and staff. I think Chief wanted to go first tonight. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council. Um, I have a few things to report. Uh, the first item to report is, uh, as I uh, notified you last week, uh, this is my public announcement that uh, I'm gonna be retiring uh, from the police department, uh, effective March 31st. Um, I, I do that with real mixed emotions, um, but um, over the holidays, uh, my family convinced me that uh, 47 years of law enforcement and 25 years as chief might be enough. And uh, uh, I have, uh, well, for those nine days, eight days, I argued with them, and probably about, probably about the ninth day, I finally gave in and agreed to, to that. Uh, uh, obviously, they want to spend more time with me. So I wanted to uh, advise the community of that. And I wanted to publicly thank uh, all of you for your support uh, during my time here. Uh, as you know, I was hired uh, by Jeff on a handshake agreement for three to five years to make some improvements in the police department. We've made over 100 improvements in three years. And um, we're in pretty good shape right now, I think. Um, I've got uh, some things to report to you. Uh, we received our national award from the National Association of Town Watch for a uh, uh, national award winner for uh, National Night Out. And we have made a collage of photographs uh, during that event. So uh, I wanna show you this. I think you'll, you'll like it. This is gonna be hanging, has been hanging in the police department. This will as well. Also we, finished our crime report uh, 2018 as compared to 2019. Crime is down 24% in Fort Morgan, um, which is uh, very substantial. Um, and one of the first things I'm gonna do when I go into retirement is I like uh, Councilman Shasho's shirt. I'm gonna get one just like that. Uh, okay, I'm looking forward to it. So again, I wanted to thank you for uh, supporting the police department, supporting me personally during my time here. It's been a great experience. I, I have nothing but good things to say about uh, the city and how we've been treated and we've made great progress uh, in the police department. And, and if I might just make a couple of comments, I wanna thank Paul for his dedication to the city of Fort Morgan over the last few years. I know he's got three more months of dedication that he's going to give us, uh, but you know, some, some important things I think for the council and the public to know about his service here at the city of Fort Morgan is that he has come in with uh, an effort to improve the police department. I think he's done a really good job with that. We see additional programs, uh, community policing, 
um, and we see new SRO uh, at the middle school and a lot of other things that have impacted the community in a positive way, not to mention the statistics and the reduction of crime. One statistic that I don't think many people are aware of is that if you take what we've paid Paul over the last three years and compare it to the amount of money and grants that he's been able to provide the city, which doesn't include, I, I may or may not include uh, his influence in getting some of our top uh, leaders in the police department into some of the most, um, I don't know, what would you call it, uh, exquisite or uh, premier uh, training programs in the country. Uh, he he uh, has garnered, uh, I guess, a two to one uh, investment. Uh, for every dollar we paid him, he brought in two dollars. And I think when you look at that, uh, he's done an exceptional job. And something I don't think people know about Paul, or he doesn't go out and toot his own horn, so I'll toot it for him, is you know, he is considered uh, an expert in the country as it relates to administration of small to medium-sized police departments. He wrote the handbook that was adopted by International Chiefs of Police Association, and he's on several boards uh, that oversee um, law enforcement agencies throughout the state of Colorado. And I think we've been privileged and very fortunate to have Paul here with us over the last three years. And Paul, uh, best of luck to you. Don't forget where we're at. And uh, again, thank you for all you've done uh, for our community. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Um, a lot of things going on in the city right now. We're gearing up for, as we were talking about, a big budget this year. And I know that uh, we've had a lot of meetings of things that need to be done, how we're going to get them done, and uh, we're very excited uh, to start moving that direction. Um, a couple of things that are coming up for council. We're going to be working on the uh, 2021 budget calendar. And part of that is we will be having uh, our standard retreat with city council to go over uh, goals and everything else. And, and this year I would uh, recommend and, and would request a little bit of feedback that we get a third party uh, facilitator that can come in and kind of facilitate uh, our retreat. Usually I do that, but I think it would be good with um, uh, the situation and, and, and new uh, ideas coming onto the council to be able to have a third party that can come in and do that. I've reached out to a retired city manager who was a city manager in uh, Evans, Colorado, as well as Parker and other places well respected in the city manager field that uh, said he, w w I asked him if he'd be willing to do it, he wanted some additional information, but before I entertain any additional information, I just wanted to know if that would be something council would be interested in at our retreat this year is to have a third party facilitator come in and assist with our goal setting for the 2021 budget and beyond. For me. I, if I, I'm not seeing no's and I'm seeing some yeses and I'll, I'll get some specifics back, I'll just continue well, I think to do that. That's a decision we should make once we set new, but the council the new will council. be there. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get some additional information for the new council and for everyone else so that we can uh, go down that road. Uh, other than that, I want to thank all of our uh, employees for the hard work that they're doing. We had a really good uh, holiday season and I want to thank council for all your support. And if there are any questions or issues that have come up that we can answer, <coughs> we're here for your feedback. Um, I had a couple calls just with um, concern about the animal licensing law that they weren't opposed to it, but they just felt like there could be improved communication. Um, just the form itself is pretty blurry, and you know, it's not, it's, so the physical form is not great, but just an accompanying letter to explain the rationale or explain the benefit to the community. Um, so I don't know, I know the Times had a good piece about it that was, um, had some great facts in it, but um, the alarm from um, two uh, uh, Ward 2 residents who said that it was pretty alarming to have the date say that it was by January 1st and the, by the time they received it, it was after January 1st. So just to have one more layer of um, women <coughs> in the future to, uh, to get the word out. fine tune uh, the communication a little yeah. bit better. And, and we had worked with the uh, Humane Society and I, I think we, we probably didn't work well enough in the expectations of what that communication would be, but I appreciate the feedback. And we'll definitely get some more information out on Facebook and some of our other 
uh, media outlets to to make sure people understand what that is. And I I imagine that you know people have a little bit of time. I know we're starting January 1st the process to get licensed, and it'd be up to the police chief on when the strict enforcement comes down on that. But I imagine people still have some time to get in there and 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 get that taken care. Of. So it's a good community like the grace period, and then and some of the rationale would be really helpful. Okay. And also, um, I had a couple of people that asked similar questions and who I, it would be good to, to tell them who to reach out if they have questions about the process somebody asked me specifically about they adopted a pet that they don't they don't have any proof that the animal was neutered so sort of bringing the said animal in there's they had there's just some questions out there about okay. how if you know if you don't have the documentation because you you know you adopted the pet or took the pet in you know, how do you produce that documentation that you need? So just a point of contact if people have questions. Okay, that's very good, thank you. Yep. Bids, meetings, and announcements. Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Your Honor, it's uh, that time of year, so we've got a lot of bids out currently. <clears throat> the city is accepting sealed bids for the following on the following dates fiberglass poles until 3 p.m. on January 8th, LED light fixtures until 3 p.m. on January 8th, uh, insulated extended cab bucket truck until 3 p.m. on January 15th, automated fueling system credit card reader replacement project until 3 p.m. on January 16th, three police patrol vehicles until 3 p.m. on January 16th, Four-wheel drive half-ton pickup until 3 p.m. January 21st. Full-size three-quarter-ton crew cab flatbed pickup until 3 p.m. on January 21st. Water main line insta valves until 3 p.m. on January 22nd. Electrical conductors until 3 p.m. on January 22nd. Electric distribution wood poles until 3 p.m. on January 22nd. Two trailer mounted variable message sign boards until 3 p.m. on January 23rd. Census water meters until 3 p.m. on January 23rd. Hydrants, water valves, and pipe until 3 p.m. on January 23rd. Itron 100W water erts until 3 p.m. on January 23rd. And water main replacement parts until 3 p.m. on January 23rd. Under meetings, the airport advisory board is scheduled to meet tomorrow at noon at the airport. The planning commission is scheduled to meet on January 13th here at City Hall at 4.30 p.m. And the senior center advisory board is scheduled to meet at 1.30 p.m. at the senior center on January 14th. Also on January 14th will be another city council meeting. That will be a special meeting, the organizational meeting where we uh, have incoming and outgoing um, council members. And on January 17th, city facilities will be closing at 3.30, 3 p.m. for the annual employee meeting, all employee meeting, which will be at 3.30 p.m. at the Cover Theater. And then on January 20, 20th, that's a Monday, um, offices will be closed for Martin Luther King Day. Uh, <coughs> one quick announcement, the Nugget Skills Challenge is this uh, Saturday at the Armory. All the information's on our website. That is all. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> Brent, you'll be busy with bids, it sounds like, through the utilities. Nothing else coming before this council. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>